Hi there and welcome. This is Point of View. I'm Mark Leishman and my guest is Andy Lowe. Well, he was born on a, a dairy farm in Hawke's Bay and then the family moved to a beef farm in North Otago. And at 17 he convinced his brother and father to buy a small piece of land and rear a thousand calves. So he has that entrepreneurial spirit. After Otago Uni and studying surveying, he became a project surveyor on a couple of New Zealand's largest mining projects at that time. And during uni, Andy uh, showed entrepreneurial spirit again by starting a company called AgriMap, producing GPS farm maps. And that's pretty much the story we're going to hear tonight. So welcome to the program, Andy. Great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. You always had that uh, entrepreneurial spirit, didn't you? Yes, absolutely. Born this way. Where did, where did that come from? Was your father a bit like that? Or? Actually, it was probably my mother. Yes. Never really thought about it. And so AgriMap, um, where did it come from? Now, you started it at uni, while you are at uni, but obviously, uh, and then you, you went and did other things. You went surveying, you went travelling. Tell us about your, your story, your journey. I kept doing the GPS maps um, along the way throughout my early 20s, yeah. uh, just as a sideline. And I came to realise uh, there was a much bigger opportunity and taking those GPS maps and making them digital. Uh, cloud technologies were coming of age, you know, you use software online now instead of on your computer, smartphones arrived, suddenly you could do so much more um, than just a piece of paper. So what was it initially, when you say, because GPS even, what was this sort of eight years ago, ten years ago or something? Yeah, that's going back uh, ten, years. ten years. GPS was a relatively, I suppose, well I, I presume a relatively new thing, I mean we thought about it on boats and things and various other bits and pieces, never thinking one day you'd have it on your phone, but it was, what was it like then? Ten years ago, um, GPS was a big deal. It was this fascinating new technology that had just shifted from the US Department of Defence into the hands of consumers. And the fact that you could walk around someone's farm with a GPS unit and take measurements of the strainer posts to make a really accurate map was, it was mind-blowing. Um, and now everything's got a GPS in it, right? You know, every phone, they're everywhere and they cost nothing and that's moved so fast. So you saw that uh, initially, obviously, you had this sort of thing, well, hey, this is something that we can explore. Yeah, no, I definitely saw the opportunity when I was farming. Yeah. No one else was doing anything like that? Oh, there was a couple of companies around, but it wasn't really a, a mainstream thing back then. Yeah. Uh, but very quickly, as the technology became easier to use, a lot of people came out and started producing GPS farm maps. So a lot, I suppose, when we think about it, the, the, you, I, I see in my mind um, those photographs that every farmer has in his office wall, the aerial photograph of your farm, your layout. I guess, in a sense, that was the beginning of this, really. You, know, you could see something from here, so you had a gauge of what it looked like. Yeah, so that's probably where it all started, way back. With those aeroplanes flying over and taking the photos. So, what was the next step? What did you do? You went off travelling and stuff, eh? Yep, I spent a lot of time in North America travelling around. I actually did one epic trip, drove um, an old Dodge V8 van from the Arctic Ocean in Alaska down to Florida. And then you decided to come back and explore this... Uh, well, AgriMaps had been born, obviously. It was born at, uh, at uni, at Otago University. Um, what happened then? This opportunity was there to move into the digital age and um, this was really born out of a necessity. Uh, we were working in with um, a consultant and his group of farmers and they had this issue with um, sharing information, like collecting it and sharing it. So the farmer's going about his farming, the consultant needs to see what activities were done so that he can make uh, good recommendations, right? And then he needs a way to share that recommendation with the farmer, and the farmer needs a way to be able to find it whenever he needs it. Uh, and we quickly realised that we could take this, um, this paper map, we could put it on the internet, make it interactive, and suddenly you could record everything that you'd done on the farm against a paddock, and instantaneously your consultant or your workers or whoever could see it on their phone or on their laptop. And so you had this way to just share information like never before. And it's really spiralled from there into something quite magnificent. So what did you need to make it happen? I mean, you were a surveyor. That so, was your training. That's right. I had the, the mapping knowledge. Yeah. Yep. So I teamed up with um, a friend from university who was a really highly skilled computer programmer. Been writing code since he was, oh, maybe seven years old. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, yeah, we pulled together a company and we got it rolling and 
brought in more people and built up a good team. So what's what's happened now? What's 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 the latest stage you're at? Uh, well, we're flat out selling it actually. Um, we've got farmers coming on, um, done a real flurry. Yeah. Yep. As word spreads, um, people swear by it. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of farmers coming on now. There's something like a million hectares under management in Agramap. And so, um, I mean, are you, do, you, I mean, do you go around to individual farms or, uh, and have to map them or it's already been done and you're just using that info? Or so we built some tooling for the farmer to actually map it himself. Right. See, um, even now with cheap GPS, it'll still cost you a few thousand dollars mm. to get someone to map your farm. Now we give you the tools to do it yourself on your computer from your kitchen table. Uh, can you say how that works? How it works? Oh, it's quite simple. Um, you have a satellite image yes. and you draw your... Is that like off Google Maps or something like that? Yeah, similar to that, yeah. 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 So you, you create your program yourself um, and then we give you ways to tweak it to suit your particular um, way of managing your farm because no two farms are run the same. So that's something that makes a really good farming app is it's got to be versatile. Yeah. You've got to be able to change the way it operates to suit what you're doing. And are farmers getting onto it? I mean, they're, they're, they're up with it. I mean, they're a pretty innovative mob, really, aren't they? Yeah, oh, they love it. Why do farms need to go digital? The time is just, it's come, really. Um, uh, huge compliance rules are coming in. That, you, know, you have to keep records to prove what you've been doing. Uh, it's getting harder to make a profit, so you need to start finding new and innovative ways to get more efficient. Um, and digital's easy now, so why wouldn't you? <laughs> and what are the, what are the advantages? What do people get out of it? What, what does the farmer gain from being a part of this? The biggest thing for the farmer is his ability to now make really good decisions. So every decision a farmer makes uh, has a huge financial significance. That decision could play out for several years. It could cost tens of thousands of dollars. And when we make a decision, we make it based on information that we have about what's already happened. So normally in everyday life, when you need to know something, you Google it. You can't Google your farm until now. If you're on Agrimap, you can. So you want to do something, you jump in there, and uh, let's say you want to, you're thinking about sowing lucerne. Type in lucerne, tell you everything you need to know about what you've done in the past. Uh, how successful it's been, all that sort of stuff. Exactly. What did you spray it with? Um, what sort of yields did you get? So as long as you're recording things, yeah. your team's recording things, your agronomist, everyone, you've just got this massive knowledge bank that you can draw on. Extraordinary, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, is it expensive? No, I mean the cost is negligible. It's under a dollar a day. So all you do is pay for your farm, unlimited users. Um, like I said, you get that map for free when you set it up, 30 bucks a month, I mean. Essentially you've got a map of your farm, um, I wonder if you go into sort of slightly more detail about you know, how it works, I mean the map of the farm and you put in hills and valleys and all this sort of stuff to make it look as real I guess as, as possible. Yep, so you've drawn up all your paddocks yeah. and there's your farm map and sitting on top of the satellite image, so it's a photo of your farm. Yeah. And then think of it like, a little bit like Facebook, you have a timeline of your farm Where's that information come from though? That's stuff that you've kept in the past, so it's your, just your own records. records. Yep. Yep. And you add those in, yep. you input those, yeah. And you want your staff to be doing it as well, and your contractors, so everyone is adding this information. So once it's in there, you've got a base, and, right. and then ongoing years, it's just added to and added to, and so you've got a wonderful history of what, what you've done and what you've achieved and how successful or not successful it has been. And if you take it a step further, you can actually learn from your neighbours or friends as well. If they add you to their account and you want to do some research on how to do something, jump into their farm, Google it, find out. So up until now, farming just hasn't had a wealth of information. Um, but now you can find out anything you need to know. And this is real information. It's not like a lot of other agri-technologies involving, say, sensors that produce a thousand data points an hour, uh, which is really kind of useless to you. Mm. Um, it's yeah, too much. That's it. What's more beneficial, um, knowing how much moisture you've got in your soil every second, or knowing, did I put urea on that paddock last week?
What apps do you think farmers need to, you know, I guess, to cover the essentials? There's two fundamentals in running your farming business. You've got your operations and you've got your financials. So you need an app that covers each one of those. Um, it's preferable that you get separate apps because no one's really managed to make one that does it all. So AgriMap just covers your operations. And then there's, there's amazing financial tools out there like MYOB software that'll do your financials. I mean, apps are, are the, well, they're the now, they're not the future anymore, are they? Uh, they're just vital to, and uh, farmers, do you find into using them? Absolutely, yep, yep. Because everyone's got that iPhone now, um, they want to put stuff on it and it's on them all the time, they want to use them. Are you seeing a, a, like a, a sort of surge in new apps that are, agricultural or agribusiness related coming through? Hey, everybody wants to build an app at the moment. <laughs> but uh, it's not necessarily a good thing. It has meant that um, there's now an app for everything. But building an app is, is very difficult, it's very expensive. Um, so there's a lot of low quality stuff out there. Um, and you also need to pay a little bit of attention as to who's built this app and why are they providing it to you. So it's become um, quite a big thing now for agribusinesses, fertilizer companies, you know, MeWorks, to, to provide you a free app. So you've got to ask yourself, why are they doing that? Why is this $10 million app given to me for free? How are they actually making money out of it? Yeah. So it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Are some other apps that you, you, you recommend? The, the big one, I'd really suggest farmers get on to is MYOB Essentials to manage their finances. You need to know straight away what your financial position is. You need to be able to whip out your phone and know within a few seconds, not nine months after the end of the financial year, finding out did we make any money or not. Um, this is fascinating. Andy, lovely chatting with you. We'll have a wee bit of a break and we'll be back with more from Andy Lowe from AgriMap. And, uh, I guess we'll take a look at more apps and how they can improve farm profitability. You're watching Point of View, back in just a sec. Welcome back, this is Point of View, our usual Friday evening fair, and my special guest is Andy Lowe from AgriMap. Uh, once again, just explain what AgriMap does. AgriMap's the farming app, so you use it to manage all the fundamentals of your farming operation. You keep your records, you manage your jobs, um, you do your planning in there, uh, and even keep your staff timesheets. It's all based on an interactive map. So the whole thing, I mean, obviously it's improving all the time, you're developing it all the time. Are you trying to make it even more all-encompassing as an app? Yes, we are developing it flat out. It's getting better by the day. Um, there's a limit to how many features we will put in there because then it becomes cluttered. We like to keep it simple, streamlined and fast and we will never go near financials. So I mean I alluded to in the, in the first part of our program that it's really like the photograph, the aerial photograph that we all are so familiar with, the black and white photograph that was taken by some Hawke's Bay aeroplane company years and years ago. This is taking it showing you that, but then you're delving into each of the paddocks and working out what's required on that particular paddock, what you want to put in there perhaps, if you want to change a crop, whatever. What about for, 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 for grazing and things like that? Um, Absolutely. You know, Fertilisers? And... Yep, so let's take grazing as an example. Um, you put a mob of cattle into a paddock when they go in, you take a photo of the pasture cover, you take a photo of the stock. Um, you grab the date and you press safe and you're all done. And then when you go to take those cattle out, you do the same. And then in six months time, when you want to look back and see how many grazings you got out of that paddock, perhaps, how well it was performing, you've got this photo every time they went in and went out. Um, you've got the photo of the cattle. Where you, you've got just so much information, all from a few seconds each time. And so you're literally on your phone taking a photograph of the paddock mm -hmm. and its condition, lush grass, and then afterwards, not much grass left, whatever. What about the cattle? What are you seeing in the cattle in that time? Who knows, because when you take the photo at the time, you may not have noticed anything. Yeah. But two weeks later, you might notice there's a bit of a problem. When did that start? Yeah. 
you know, what's going on here? You can look back and, and see. Um, there's just, there's so many uses for this. So again, I referred to Facebook earlier. If you think um, Facebook, you take a photo of your coffee and you write having a delicious latte, hashtag, I don't want to know. <laughs> so it took you five seconds right to do that and you've recorded something utterly useless that nobody cares about. Yeah. But an Agri map, it's taking you five seconds to grab the equivalent sort of information and it could be exceptionally useful for you in the future. Um, I mean, a, a great idea. And this just sort of just came in a blinding flash of light one night, or how, how, did, it, how did it evolve? I don't remember exactly how um, the idea came about, but um, what really moved it forward was um, working in with uh, an agronomist, Rudd and Claw Consulting, and his group of farmers. And they had this issue with sharing information, right? Um, and we realised there's a really easy way to solve this problem. It's a big problem and it's easy to fix. So we built this prototype and it was awesome. Everybody loved it. And so we went commercial with it. You know, we scaled this, this product up and um, got a lot of farmers on board. And when I look at the product now and when I look at the, the first version, we've come a very long way and uh, 18 months or two years or something, yeah. So the original AgriMaps that you did, you started at university, um, what, what was that sort of like? Pretty basic, obviously. Uh, looking back on it, it seems so basic. Yeah. But at the time, it was kind of complex. They had to have um, you know, surveying level knowledge to, to do it. What, what makes a good farming app? Uh, it's got to be easy to use. Uh, you're talking about... Um, a demographic that's so broad. Um, older people who didn't grow up with computers, um, right across the spectrum to maybe people who don't speak very good English. It's got to be simple, it's got to be intuitive, and it's got to be fast. Now that brings up another question, the older generation. Um, do they use these? Are they buying into AgriMap and uh, are they able to use them? Initially we thought that it would be the younger generation who would come on board, but age seems to have no bearing on who uses it. Uh, anyone who is a forward-thinking um, uh, farmer uh, who wants to be better, who wants to be the best they can be, they're on. So you know, there's, there's 70 year olds using it. What do you say to those who would say, well that's very well and good, but you know, I haven't had the, the, the roll out yet, the internet's not crash hot, my smartphone, my access here is pretty rubbish really. Um, those ones who are more isolated, is there any relief for them? We've spent a lot of money getting around that problem. Yeah. So the app will actually work on your phone without cell phone or internet coverage. When you get back to the house and connect to your Wi-Fi, even if it's pretty shoddy, it's going to sync up over time, go to the cloud. Divulge all that information or whatever, upload it or... Um, how do you rate Kiwi apps you know, in the world scene? Uh, are we good at this? That's an interesting one. Uh, Kiwis believe that we're good at this stuff, uh, but if you travel around the world and you sort of you move in this community, um, the rest of the world does not look to New Zealand for agri-tech, unfortunately. When the rest of the world's farmers think agri-tech, they think Israel and the United States. So we think we're pretty innovative, but in actual fact we're not? Or? No, we probably are very innovative, we're just not very good at getting onto the international market. Right. So a bit like, it's a bit like the whole industry really, is in a sense, you know, like sheep and beef and wool, getting the message across that this, is, this country is special, that you know, it's purer than most. Um, that, that seems to be the message that should be getting across more and more, the marketing side of it. It's not, I agree. I was in a supermarket in Canada recently and a Canadian lamb was very expensive and very well positioned on the, on the shelf and branded. And the Kiwi lamb was about a quarter of the price in a bulk buy bin at the end of an aisle. Really? And then I was in a high-end restaurant in San Francisco. The most expensive item on the menu was not lobster, it was New Zealand lamb. So... We're not doing a very good job of... One side where, you know, this premium product is in the bolt bin. Yeah. I mean, how would that happen? Golly, eh? yeah. who would know? So uh, New Zealand Agritech uh, has a lot to offer, but we need to do a better job of getting onto the international stage. And a big part of that is the lack of funding. How are you um, 
Yeah, that, funding for research, etc., for research and development. You mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And how are you uh, received overseas? I mean, you've taken this to markets around the world. You know, the the digital markets, I suppose they're called. Um, does it is it unusual? Is it unique in the world, or are others doing similar things? There's other companies now doing similar things. There's no one quite doing what we're doing. We still have our own space. Um, but yeah, there are companies popping up um, a lot in the United States and they're getting a lot of funding yeah. and um, they're that's really getting well. Against. Yes, that's right. Well, actually even in New Zealand we're up against um, other uh, pseudo competitors who have significant funding from government or from industry. And, and you know, so um, when, you, when you go overseas, uh, generally is it well received? I mean, they think this is a great idea and then do you have to somehow protect it from someone waltzing off with your great idea? Everyone worries about getting your idea stolen but an idea is worthless unless you can execute on it. Yeah. We're very good at executing. Uh, and you've been doing it a, a while now. Right. I mean, We're okay. experts. Yeah. We know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so people could try and copy us but good luck to them. And now smartphones, they're supposed to save us time, and I suppose they do, but we do seem to spend a lot of time looking at Facebook and all the things that they provide that waste time. But anyway, um, do they do the opposite? Are they good for us? If you use, the right, if you use them for the right things, they're really good for us. Um, if you use them for the, the fun, addictive things, they're actually quite bad for us. I mean, you can waste so much time yes. on Twitter and Facebook yeah. and really achieve nothing. Yeah. Or you could use Google Maps and never get lost again. <laughs> They are a good thing. Like uh, some people give them a bit of a bad rap, but smartphones have changed the world. And a good app saves you time. Absolutely. So take Agramap for example. Um, let's say you need to assign a job to your fertilizer spreader. Uh, in the past, you had to you know, wait till you got back to the, the house after dinner, and you'd try and ring them up and eventually get hold of them and give them some rough description of hey, can you come and put your ear on the second back paddock by the pine tree and it sort of scratch his head and say, okay. Now you can be standing out on the farm at lunchtime, whip out your phone, grab the Agramap app, click on that paddock and send the job straight through to your first spreader. He knows, Mark out what you want done. Yeah, he knows instantly what he needs to do, where, when, how. And then when he comes to the farm, he uses the GPS on his phone or his tablet to go to that highlighted paddock. Yeah. It's now impossible to do the wrong thing. <laughs> what are your thoughts, or if any, on the, the compliance regulations, or what's required these days, which seems to be more and more? It's a fact of life now. Um, every other industry in the world has gone through regulatory process. Right back to uh, the motor car, when we worked out it was causing air pollution, they had to have catalytic converters, you know, and that was three decades ago. I think that the time's come now for farming, like it or lump it, this compliance is here to stay. Uh, and with over 80% of our population being urban, we're outvoted anyway. Um, is there a skill shortage in your industry, do you think? Do you need more, I don't know, engineers? Oh, there's a massive Thinking? skill shortage in New Zealand for engineers. Mm. Yep, they're very hard to find. Particular ones, computer engineers or just across the board? Oh yeah, in IT, computer engineers, yeah. yep. Um, particularly in, in mobile development. Uh, they are very hard to find. And if they're good, they're overseas working? Yeah, that's right. You're on three, four hundred thousand dollars a year in Silicon Valley if you can work on a mobile app. Yeah. Um, but for all the teenagers coming through, um, thinking about their career prospects, IT is a good one. Yeah. But so is farming. Uh, there's a huge skill shortage problem coming in farming. It's our biggest industry. It's very lucrative. And not many people are choosing to go into it as a career. When actually the job prospects are amazing, um, the pay is quite high, and it's a really interesting job. Um, but we're now working in with New Zealand young farmers um, to help with the education side of things. Um, because farming is also getting a lot more complex. You need a higher level of skills now. Um, so we're doing the best we can with them to help that generation coming through to um, upskill and be the best they can be. Absolutely. So the future, I mean, uh, even before that, um, how do people get in touch? How do people 
get involved with Agrimap? This is a piece of cake. You, <laughs> you go to agrimap.com and you click the big button that says start my trial. You enter your email address and create a password and then you go. Really it's all start, automated. Start the yep. In the future, I mean, you're, I mean, uh, endless, yeah, exciting. The future is very, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, there's no need to be worried about the future. Um, technology is making it so much better. We're solving so many of humanity's big problems with technology. And my thanks to Andy Lowe there from Agrimap, a fascinating subject and uh, intriguing idea, isn't it? So have a look and uh, see if it suits you. That's our point of view. We'll have another point of view at the same time next week. We'll see you then.